Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Let's Play Death Stranding. I hope you're all having a wonderful day as we continue on with our run of the game. Give BB some love. Oh shit, I'm shaking him too much. Gotta be careful. The six axis controls are not nearly as good as what they used to be. Yeah, he's getting pissed. I'm being very gentle. Yeah, he's still getting upset. Yeah. So at least on PS4, we now know, at least on PC anyway, the uh, six axis is a bit wonky because I'm barely even moving the controller. <laughs> I might want to switch this over to uh, manual controls. People have been using our climbing anchors and some pathways that we've been working on, and we have some standard orders to go work. Our boots are still okay, and I believe we are out of BT territory for a little bit. So we can go to fabrication equipment. Hey, great work. That wind farm you've brought into the network is essential for our continued expansion. By way of reward, I've added a little something to your PCC. A generator option. Generators recharge the batteries of all nearby devices. That includes machines, bikes, and other battery-powered vehicles. Alright, so now we have access to that bike that's outside of the distribution center. And we have two boots in our inventory right now, but the one's about to break. As you can see, 87% damage. But I think that's actually enough to uh, allow us a chance back home. I believe we have that memory chip we can hand in now. So, you're a treasure hunter in your spare time, huh? It's funny. I didn't think you had any. And we got Frame Arm Girls, Biaka. Thank you for your contribution. And we get one like from Dead Man for that. And some stamina reduced, which is mm. nice. Let's go to our mail. We got mail from Nick Easton from Capital Knot City. Still alive, new guy? Sam, how you doing out there? For a newbie, you're quite the workhorse, huh? Time falls probably taking this toll on your equipment, am I right? Maybe some of your kit's not even usable anymore. Well, don't jump the gun and throw that stuff away just yet. One thing you can do is take your old equipment to a delivery terminal and recycle it. You can then fabricate yourself a shiny new whatever to use instead. Don't know if you're aware, but the whole recycling system is operated by the Bridget Strand Foundation. That's right, the president herself set it up as a means to convert busted tools and gear back into usable resources. On the other hand, if your equipment's only halfway to broke, but you still bought, you want to part ways with it, you could use a share locker to donate it to another porter who's in need, uh, whose need is greater than yours. You may well end up getting a like or two for your generosity. Never mind the warm, fuzzy feeling of having helped your fellow man. Of course, the system works both ways, meaning you can snag stuff other porters have put in the share lockers if you're the one who needs them. Anyway. Both the recycling system and the share lockers have their uses, and it's up to you to pick which method best suits your needs at any given point. You've still, still got a lot to learn, I guess, but you'll have it all figured out in no time. I've got high hopes for you. Guys call me a goddamn kid. Can't believe it. Let me go check out our new memory. Chip. Frame Arms Girls was a spin-off of the Frame Arms series of plastic robot figurines from Koto Bakaya, in which the robots of Frame Arms are reimagined as human female characters. This particular figurine is the female version of the Biako model. While reimagining characters in this way may seem particular to Japanese pop culture, in particular the Moe movement, personifications of this kind go all the way back to ancient Greece. The adaptation of the explorer Amerigo Vespucci's name into the name of the country of America can also be seen as a personification of sorts. Which one is this one then? Biako, and she is... 
the female version of Bianco. Is that what it said? Yep, Bianco. Okay, so she's the female version of this robot. <laughs> I love these robots, man. They, they're, I guess they're, they look like Armored Cores to me. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Armored Core was inspired by this, or this was inspired by Armored Core, those uh, specific figurines, which apparently are real world things, right? Like a lot of this stuff references real world uh, items and what have you. We're just gonna quickly go through our tips. Just so when we actually get something important, we don't have to worry about this stuff. Oh my God, we got interviews. Okay, we're going to go through the interviews before we move on. I know, if you want gameplay, you can just check the timestamps below. Humanity's biggest problem? Logistics by Die Hardman. War and famine have been inescapable parts of human life since the rise of our species. And while the fall of America hasn't changed this fundamental truth, it's fair to say that these issues aren't pressing concerns. Can you remember the last time you heard of a prepper dying of starvation, much less someone in a not city? No one's fighting over water, oil, or anything else. Which isn't to say that people don't occasionally run out of supplies. But that's almost never because of a real shortage. It's usually a problem with logistics. In fact, it was to address such problems that the president created bridges and developed uh, the Cairo network. So yeah, no one's that desperate. Everybody's got enough for themselves. Which is what led to the real problem. It's all too easy for people to become isolated from one another, and eventually forget the, uh, forget that others even exist. People are free to live for themselves, for the moment, without a care for the future. The president understood this better than anyone, and I know just how much it pained her. Our man has two more. Chiral Contamination 1, from three years ago. Chiral contamination is the result of prolonged exposure to chiral radiation, which is emitted by chiralium, a substance discovered at the same time as the beach. Prolonged exposure can significantly impact physical and mental health. The effects are not dissimilar from those observed in individuals exposed to extremely high levels of stress, levels which can be fatal, even. Such traumatic experiences can alter hormonal secretions, impair immune response, contribute to heart failure, and induce strokes. The most common symptom of chiral contamination is poor sleep quality due to vivid nightmares. If left unchecked, however, it can quickly progress a more advanced stage in which the aforementioned issues may be observed. The potential impact of an individual's mental health cannot be understated. The resulting hormonal imbalances frequently led to heightened destructive impulses towards the self and others. Those dominated by such urges are named homo demons, the mad ones. In the case of some porters, such as mules, impaired memory and judgment has led them to develop a rational obsession with their profession, hence the homo gestalt moniker. While it should be feasible and preferable for most individuals to avoid chiral contamination at all costs, there are those with a demonstrated resistance who need not be so cautious. I speak, of course, of Doom's sufferers. Hence why our main character here isn't as affected by chiral network stuff, or uh, chiral, or chiralium and whatnot. He has Dooms. And uh, there's different levels of Dooms. For example, Fragile that we've run across has a different set of Dooms ahead of him. Just think of it as like tiers of resistance or tiers of immunity, right? If you have, uh, say, someone with a peanut allergy, then you could have someone that has a more severe peanut allergy than that person, and it goes beyond that, but it's in the reverse, right? You're more immune to that type of thing. The discovery of beaches and the concept of death. I should mention, though, that... Sorry, before we move on with that, not only is it, like, degrees of levels, but, like, as you become more immune to that stuff, you also become more adapted to it and can manipulate it into um, being used at your will. Hence how Fragile is able to freaking teleport around, right? How we're also able to essentially transform these items or craft these items seemingly instantaneously with a chiral printer because time doesn't exist. 
in the chiral planes, right? On the beach, time doesn't move. Or at least in the same way that it does in our world. All right, moving on. The discovery of beaches and the concept of death, also three years ago. With the discovery of the beach, the fundamental truth of death was unpended. I doubt you will find many who would deny this. Alas, we can say little with confidence in any objective or scientific capacity. For our understanding of this new realm remains in its infancy and is ever evolving, much like our understanding of the universe as a whole. Perhaps the closest thing we have to a working explanation of the beach relates to the conception of a multiverse, but I digress. The beach is arguably both a concept and a reality. A discrete beach is influenced by the mind of the associated individual and therefore linked to them irrevocably. This is why we have so energetically pursued the psychological, psychoanalytical, and neuroscientific angles when attempting to create a unified theory of the Death Stranding, the beach, and related phenomena. There was a fad a while back in which subjects underwent counseling in order to learn more about their beaches and in so doing, gain a greater understanding of the nature of death. Doom's sufferers, in particular, provided excellent opportunities for study. An interesting theoretical question arose during that period. If a person's beach was a product of their consciousness, might animals have beaches as well? A conundrum on the surface, perhaps, but one quickly resolved. Only human corpses undergo necrosis and become beached things, which proves somewhat conclusively that only a human can possess a beach. And yet this begs another question. If all that is required is consciousness akin to that of a human, could an AI have a beach? An android? I for one do not believe so. Why? Because the function of our beaches is to connect the worlds of the living and the dead. If an entity was never born, has not truly lived, and will never know death, surely it cannot have a beach. So only humanity has access to the beach through death. It is our version of, I guess, heaven in this case, right? But it is a physical entity created by our consciousness. It is not necessarily something that you share. It is your own secluded area that you go upon fail or failure of life. I guess you could call it. Kind of haunting that you'll be forever alone. Congrats, Sam. You're cleared to take on open orders. While they're not as high priority as the ones specifically assigned to you, if you're already heading a certain way and you have room to spare, it couldn't hurt to do a little more, right? Just because they're not mission critical doesn't mean they're not important to someone. So why not do a good deed or two? Okay, so this brings in standard orders. And these... Sam, double check the order summary. Okay, so the way that this works is essentially a infinite way to earn likes or EXP, right? And it's a great way to level up your friendship with these various uh, areas. And I should point out that you only will gain points for the area you are delivering to. So if we're grabbing it from the wind farm, if it ends up anywhere else other than the wind farm, the wind farm gets nothing for you doing this quest. This is a request from the wind farm to say distribution center west of Capital Knot City as the power supply inspection tools is. So we will get a thumbs up from the Capital Knot City area, the, the distribution center. And we will work towards getting that five star rating at that location. However, another important thing, and this is for you achievement hunters out there, right? If you want to platinum the game on PS4, if you want to get all the achievements on Steam, this is also a thing that you want to at least clear each and every one of these individual standard orders with an S rank. And these are a lot more sensitive to getting S ranks than anything else, especially depending on what they are. If it's time sensitive, if it's 
uh, deliver with a specific amount of tools on broken. It's important that you do that to get the S rank because any little thing can screw over your S rank, especially time. Time can effectively screw you out of an S rank, but each one is also independent of a specific tier of your leveling, right? Time-based standard orders are the only way to increase your time-based EXP gauge, right? Or the one that's where you need to gather tons of items and carry like thousands of kilograms or hundreds of kilograms from point A to point B. That's the only way you're going to be leveling your capacity or whatever it's called. So just keep that in mind um, when doing these specific quests. Now, the thing is, we're going to get access to a bike which is going to be very valuable for us, and we will actually be able to complete these quests. Um, but let's double check our urgent quest, which is to deliver resins to the distribution center west of Capitan City, which is already a 32 kilogram quest with a delivery time limit of 45 minutes. And this is probably why we're not going to do any standard quest at the moment, just because it's so much weight that we'd be carrying um, and we want to get there safely. Bridges has printing materials stored at the wind farm. We'd like you to bring some to the distro center. These materials are pretty varied, and to get the most out of the Cairo printer, we need as many different types as we can get. Hurry back. So again, this is a time-sensitive one, so the less weight we're carrying, the easier time we're going to have. This is a somewhat unusual order. You're going to want to review the key points in the summary. So we'll do just that. Delivery time, 45 minutes. The focus of this delivery is speed. Deliver resin stored at the wind farm to the distribution center west of Capital Knot City. Try to deliver every single container, if at all possible. The more materials the facility has available, the greater variety of items it will be able to produce using the chiral printer. It is also there... Yeah, it also seems they're in a bit of a rush. So the faster you can make the delivery, the better. And you'll see that we'll get five, I think. Six. Six individual containers. Two of them are medium in size. So we will accept this order. And I don't believe we'll need anything on the way back. Uh, I will get an extra pair of shoes, just because why not. There we go. So we will carry all these on our back and then we will attach our boots to our boot clip, which won't really do anything in terms of uh, messing with our weight. And then we have climbing anchor left over and a ladder. So we are actually going to leave these in the private locker. Again, we could do share a locker. I really don't care though. <laughs> Not at the moment. Maybe next time. If, if putting them in the share locker was in that same menu, then sure. Order assigned. Okay, we're gonna quickly look at the standard order and time does not move while we're in these menus. Because all we need is 15 kilograms of stuff. And these are delivery, power supply, inspection tools. This is a cargo condition requirement. So we need to make sure that it doesn't get damaged. We should be pretty good about this. Especially if there's no BTs on the way back, we'll be okay. It is one medium sized case. Which are metal tools designed for various specialized tasks. All right. And as you can see, they don't have nearly as big of a description as the other ones. So we're not going to worry about the other two guys. We're just going to accept this. And we will confirm. He will carry us on our back. And then we'll just quickly optimize our loadout so it's not as much of a nightmare. And don't worry, the things on our clips or, or on our suit are going to keep us from uh, damaging these too bad. Biggest thing, as always, we got to make sure we don't trip into a cliff. <laughs> That's really it. Keep on keeping up. So now that we're connected online, we're going to get benefits here. Players have already built things like bridges, so we're going to use that to our advantage, just because why not? And we might as well grab these chiral uh, handprints as we go on the way back, too. Now, we don't have any way to check the weather. I don't believe we get that option until a bit later in the game. I don't even think you get that option in this island. But as you can see, it's not raining. And as long as it's not raining, that means there are no BTs whatsoever to worry about. And awesomely, there is two giant bridges here 
to keep this place nice and going. And we're even getting some awesome music that's totally copyright. Pop Virus by What's-His-Face. I only listen to that song religiously, okay? Oh, whoa. That was close. So, so far we're really only getting a lot of, um... Windy weather, but it's not too bad. Uh, you know what? Yeah, we could definitely use this ladder here. Why not? Okay. Thank you, Kryptos. Oh, I gotta remember that I have to like it on the right side. This one's for you. Thanks. There we go. Help. Gotta give him some love. No one using my rope apparently between now and the last time we've played. But that's okay. Uh, is my rope not down here, though? Uh-oh. So sometimes you run into issues where the rope likes to reset. But that's okay. Again, we can always still scale the damn thing, so it's all right. Would it be more convenient to maybe have gone left there? Probably. And we gotta hold our straps. Because most of this terrain is gonna be yellow and red. And using L2 and R2 here will make it so we're not losing as much stamina as quickly. Always nice to capitalize on our stamina here. Alright. Well, I don't want to trip. That's the thing. Tripping uphill is far worse than tripping downhill. Trust me. That's why I'm focusing more on walking. Keep on keeping on. All right, we made it through pretty much the worst of it. There we go. And we got another item here actually for the distribution center, so we might as well carry this. I know that the music's starting, but we're going to quickly just sort through our inventory. We'll keep the medals on the top. Alright. Let's enjoy our little trek back home. This is where momentum really kicks in. And there's a lot of fun gadgets you can use with momentum later on, too. But we don't want to be stupid. We don't want to roll over on our backs. and hold on to our trail. The only reason you want a major trail here is so you don't trip while you're doing your momentum run downhill. This is the fastest you really can go in the game next to using uh, any sort of assistance from tools. safe check home. I think we beat five minutes, I'm hoping. Five minutes, I find, is usually... Oh, never mind, I lied. Well, five minutes is usually a pretty good time. But we'll see if we get the S rank or not. It will be a bit disappointing if we don't get the S. 
But we have no damage, so we have a lot of things on our side right now. Let's see how it goes. Make our delivery. Which will go with the lost cargo. You brought this from the wind farm? <laughs> I can't imagine what a chore that must have been. Thank you. Huh. Made record time. Wow. Don't do things by halves, do you? Hard to believe one man could bring in a hole this big. Then again, you are a legend. All right. This should definitely push us into four stars. And there you go, the easy S rank, which gives us anything you need because we listened to the song on the way over. And we got a few extra resins for the area. It doesn't really matter all that much. It's just part of the main scenario, so it's fine. And we got Benjamin Han Hancock. Hey, nice. We can use him as a hologram if we so choose. New interview data acquired, Chiral Continuum 2, and BTs are reaching out to us. As well as our connection level has increased. That'll become much more important once we get things like zip lines and crazy nonsense. But yeah, for now, definitely pretty nice. And we'll get a bit more points here for completing a standard order. But it's not going to be a huge boost as far as I can tell. It does seem to be limited right now. Usually once you hit the five star area, that's when it likes to lock up. And you need to start reading emails or progressing the story a bit more. So don't feel like the game's bugged out. It's more so just you haven't read the emails yet. Um, the best way to progress is go into your private room. It's done more to bring people together and get them back on their feet. It's hard to believe you're just one guy. Can't help wondering if the Great Deliverer isn't actually a small army. Because it sure seems like whenever someone's in trouble, you're there to lend a hand. It's enough to make me think you just might make it all the way to the coast. Good luck out there. I'll be rooting for you. Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. All right. So here's a fun thing. You can actually replace your boots in the open a few different ways. You can do them instantaneously by standing up. But my favorite way is to actually look... Or sorry. My own favorite way is to actually... I can remember how to do it. <laughs> it's been a while. I, there's a way to actually replace your boots when you're sitting down. Yeah, I guess you just do this. So we go to our boot clip and we replace them this way. And he actually, it's a custom animation where he takes the boots off, he looks at his feet, obviously they're not bleeding because the boots weren't broken. And we get the achievement, boots are a porter's best friend for one. And sure enough, we get full recovery there, and our old pair of boots go back on our straps there, right? But we can just chuck them later, or use them for a BT. Also check on our BB. It's okay. It's alright. Again, <laughs> the, uh, the sensitivity here is definitely a lot worse than I remember it. But I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. But he's still kind of shaking it like a mother, so I don't know. It's all good. It's all good. But it's always good to do this and also uh, say hello to your BB by hitting the call out button. And the reason you want to level up your BB is because you get a higher connection, le connection level with him, which means he's going to go into autotoxemia slower. BB is very valuable in being able to detect BTs, so... So this is one of the features with calling out when you're relaxing with uh, BB, and Sam is learning how to whistle a song that he's heard in those dreams. 
whenever he connects to BB, he gets those visions, right? Of what appears to be BB's storyline of who BB was before we uh, connected with him for the first time. And uh, essentially, Sam, as you build up your connection with BB, will learn how to sing that song fully. And we can even later get a uh, harmonica. Sam's a little bit exhausted here, so how about we go into the private room for him? All right, let's go. Going to a private room is the only way to recover your permanently lost stamina. Still nothing under the bed today. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to save it here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've been enjoying the series so far, and I'm going to try and get more videos out for you guys as best as I can. I've been working a lot lately, but whenever I get free time, I'm super happy to be playing more of this amazing title. Y'all take it easy.